Hello and welcome to WMCT Sports Weekly. We bring the action of high school sports from Marlboro, Assabet Valley, and AMSA to your living room. I'm your host, Matt Passaccia. Regular seasons across the state are winding down and we're on the cusp of the playoffs. At the end of the show, we'll go over who's playing who and where they'll be playing. But first, let's take you back to last Friday's senior night where Aspit football took on Monty Tech. Seniors and parents from Aspit were recognized before the game on Friday night. AV look to extend their winning streak to four and the Bulldogs look to avoid their sixth loss of the season. The Aztecs opening play doesn't go according to plan. McManus and DiPlacido aren't on the same page and Monty Tech takes over in Aspit territory. They'd be forced to punt back to AV and Aspit would drive 77 yards capped off by this seven-yard touchdown run by DJ Doucette, putting the home team up seven to nothing. The next Bulldog possession would come down to this fourth down play, and number 89, Matt Scanlon, comes flying off the edge, taking down the quarterback for the sack, and Monty Tech would get turned over on downs. Later in the second quarter, the Bulldogs are trying to pick up the first down on third and short by going for the quarterback sneak, but the ball comes free and AV picks it up. The defense sets up the offense deep in Bulldog territory. A few plays later, quarterback Jerry McManus fakes the handoff, rolls left, and finds Scanlon cutting across the field. Scanlon reels it in, gets hit, and reaches for the pylon and scores. What a great play by senior Matt Scanlon to put the Aztecs up by 14. Next Monty Tech possession, they try airing it out. But number 21, Jake Taylor, breaks on the ball, picks it off for AV, and they would get the ball back with another opportunity to put points on the board. And that's exactly what they did. DJ Doucette plows ahead on this one-yard touchdown carry, and Asabit was starting to pull away up 21 to nothing. The Bulldogs started their last possession of the half with great field position after AV kicked it out of bounds. But on second down, Mateo Ciccone busts through the line, forces the fumble, and Asabit would recover with 18 seconds to go in the half. That was just enough time for the offense. McManus takes the shotgun snap and immediately eyes the receiver at the bottom of the screen. He feels the pressure and is forced out of the pocket. He cuts back, finds a hole, makes three Bulldogs miss as he runs 26 yards for the touchdown that ends the half. They take a 28-0 lead at the end of the half and go on to route Monty Tech, 41-6. With the win, AV improves to 7-1 and also earns a spot in this week's district playoff game against BVT. We caught up with Coach Taconis this week at practice to talk about the season to this point and what lays ahead. After an off-season where Aspet Valley football lost 18 seniors, Coach Deconis discusses how new players have stepped up and made a positive impact. Uh, we performed really well. We had a couple extra athletes that came out for the team that we didn't initially think were coming out for the team, and one of them ended up being a starting quarterback, and the other one a receiver and cornerback, and they really helped the team out. Then we had a couple kids that just really stepped up that we maybe didn't expect or didn't see that happening, and that's usually what happens. Kids graduate and other kids step up, get their chance to play and we were surprised by some of them some of them we expected it and you just never know really until you start getting into the season what's going to happen and we're just we're happy with how it went about and we still feel we have our best game to play he also spoke about what it will take to beat bvt this week the only team to beat the aztecs in the regular season we're just going to have to be more physical you know that's really what it comes down to they they beat us up up front both sides of the ball and that really was the difference. We know we have to attack them there, and it comes down to physicality, and we have to perform better. We just, we had a lot of mental breakdowns that led to points, and everything was either a block away or just a, a missed assignment, and that created all the offense for them and led up to some big plays. We also had a chance to talk to their senior running back and defensive back, DJ Bass. Senior Deshaun Bass has over 600 all-purpose yards and 11 total touchdowns on the season. But there's more to DJ than what happens on the football field. So I like working with kids. I used to work at the Boys and Girls Club, but not anymore because of football. But I like working with kids and just trying to make an impact in like other kids' lives. DJ lets us know what his favorite subject is in school and what going to Aspen Valley has done for him and his future. My favorite subject is math. I like, I just, once I learn it once, I just get it. I feel it set me down the right path. It really, like, if school doesn't work out for me, I have a trade under my belt, I can just go work with my trade and just go down that path instead of sports if I don't even go to college. Opens a lot of doors for me. He and teammate Jerry McManus have recently been granted a fifth year of eligibility by the MIAA to play basketball this season. Bass feels it will help him stay focused the remainder of his senior year. It means a lot because it's like my senior year, I'd want to be able to play basketball, but also it just, 
it helps me as a person because now I know that they're looking at me so I can know how to I have to act different, not act different, but make sure I'm more mature on the court, on and off the court, actually. To end our conversation, I asked, where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years? Honestly, I hope to either be working with kids. Actually, I kind of want to coach out of school. I want to be a coach. Like I said, I like working with kids. I like want to help them with sports. Congratulations to Deshaun on gaining his fifth year of eligibility to play basketball this winter. We certainly look forward to what he can do on the hardwood, but first, we'll see what he can do this week against BVT in the playoffs. For WMCT Sports, I'm Matt Passaccio. DJ and the rest of his teammates are looking to avoid being knocked out of the Central Mass playoffs in the first round for the second straight season. Moving to AMSA, where their boys soccer team finished the year with a 10-4-4 record and dominated Colonial League play going 9-1. While at their practice last week, Coach Bono told me that this student athlete is the heart and soul of the club. His name is Joe Hall, and he's the subject of our latest player profile. Joe is the heart and soul of the Eagles soccer team. He talked to us about what he's like away from the pitch. Well, on the field, I'm generally very loud, and I'm probably the same everywhere else. I'm very outgoing, and I generally, I spend most of my time at home, mainly because that's my, I live with my brothers and all my step-siblings, so it's one big happy family with them. Having moved to America when he was younger, Soccer has been something that's been with his family his entire life. I moved from England. I lived in England until I was uh, five years old because um, that's where my dad's from. And then we moved to America for both opportunity for my dad and for my mom to get closer to her family. My dad, um, he played semi-professionally um, up until he tore his ACL when he was 19. So it's always, always going to be something I did with my family. It wasn't that I was brought to soccer. It was that soccer was brought to me, and I just fell in love with the game through more my dad than anything. He's the biggest influencer on why I follow the sport and why I play it today. Joe's first love is soccer, but he does enjoy another sport, basketball. I do follow basketball. I've only followed, started following it recently, but it's quite, it's quite a fun sport to watch. It's very fast paced, similar to soccer, so that's probably the best reason why I follow it. For a lot of student athletes, athletics are the driving force behind staying focused in the classroom. The fact of the matter is that I mean, I've experienced this firsthand. You don't have the grades, you can't play. That happened to me last year for a little bit. So it really gets you going like, okay, if I get my grades up, my grades are good, I'm going to be able to play, and I'm going to be able to keep playing. So it's a good driving force for it. Joe explains what it was like becoming a captain and what it means to him to hold that title. It was a big honor. I mean, I wasn't expecting it because um, I didn't, I, the first couple of years, sophomore year, I didn't play much at all. Last year, I was more of like a backseat. I mean, I started, but I didn't, I didn't have, I wasn't much involved. So learning I would get it and felt like and it really means to be a leader like people look up to you people want to be like you so setting the best influence for your team all the young guys are, are going to eventually be where you are later fighting for the spot it means a lot and when we asked where will you be in 10 years Joe kept things in perspective probably still playing soccer that's all I know I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow <laughs> good luck to Joe and the Eagles in the playoffs speaking of the playoffs Marlboro football will square off against the show by Saturday night at 7 p.m. The game was originally scheduled for Friday night at 7, but with the tough weather expected, they decided to push it back a night. Asbit football, as you heard earlier in the show, will face off against BBT at Aztec Stadium Friday night at 7 p.m. Now let's go through the rest of the playoff matchups for all the playoff-bound teams here in the city of Marlboro. First, we'll start with Marlboro High. The boys' soccer team earned a first-round bye and will play at home on Monday at 7 p.m. The seven-seeded Lady Panthers play at Neshoba on Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Marlboro Field Hockey takes the field Friday afternoon with a matchup at Quabbin. Next we go to Aspen Valley where the boys soccer team travels to Blackstone Millville Friday at 2 p.m. The Lady Aztec Soccer Club faces off against Quabbin. That's also a 2.30 start on Friday. And finally, the AMSA Boys and Girls Soccer Clubs both make the playoffs. The boys play at, Qu at Quabbin at 2.30 and the girls will play a road game against the girls from Nipmuc. That game also will have a 2.30 start on Friday afternoon. That's going to do it for this week. To catch all the playoff updates on your local high school teams, you can follow our team on Twitter at WMCT Sports and by following me at Embasaccio WMCT. For WMCT Sports, I'm Matt Bisaccio. Have a great week.